This is a demonstration for faceting. Sponges in there. Okay. I should do a video sometime of me um, centering some clay. It don't look like this. <laughs> you know, it is it, it is good practice though to film yourself um, throwing, so you can look back and see what you're doing. Because it would be a comedy show for me. <laughs> Because like you're talking about, you get the thick and the thin. Uh -huh. You filming yourself doing a pull. Yeah. And then you can see it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See what you're doing. But you yeah. know something? Yeah, I think that just practice, practice, practice. You know, when you talk about like how many times you've thrown when you were in class and you did hundreds and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. We're only here for a couple of hours. Yes. And we don't, but I learn each time I see you or someone else do. Like uh, Gail mentioned, remember she kept telling us over and over, don't make the mushroom, don't make the mushroom. And I was watching as Miranda was throwing. When she got close to a mushroom, she pushed her hand in to make it to make go it back go to back. a hockey puck. Yeah. You know, that hockey puck shape yeah. instead of making that mushroom at the top. So it's little stuff we keep picking up as we go through, yeah. but we're not throwing enough. Yeah, I don't mind the mushroom because I use the mushroom as an indicator that every time you chop down and you get the mushroom, mm -hmm. you should be pushing that clay in and it should go down toward the wheel head. Mm. So that way when you get low and you push in, you can literally see the bulge mm -hmm. go down to the wheel head. Mm -hmm. And as you're watching it, it should be a nice spinning rotation and no wobble. Right, right. Mm -hmm. The minute... But you don't end up with a mushroom. No. No. That's no. what I'm talking about. No, because some people, when they have the mushroom, first thing they want to do is take their hand and do this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you've got to push it in mm -hmm. with your hand on top of it push in toward the other hand and it will go down toward the building mm -hmm. and you and that's just a way that i use for mm -hmm. students to measure once so they're getting close. instead of that movement you have to push in you, I, I tell my students to push in oh okay so you can watch it go down to the wheel mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay and you'll do that till you get to the bottom and then when you push in and you and you're um, watching it go to the wheel head you should have a nice smooth rotation as it connects mm -hmm. a lot of students problems uh, with centering is that they don't know you can see what centered looks like when someone else is doing it but you can't see what centered looks like when you're doing it mm -hmm. and so oftentimes you are centered but you don't see it and you hold your clay too long and it goes back to being off mm -hmm. and the minute it's centered you take your hands off mm -hmm. Fanny, you've got no excuses for not doing it enough. You've got a wheel at home and a camera at home. Okay, you sounded just like this. I was going to say, see, now I was thinking that, but I wasn't going to say nothing. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Lord. Diane has been here too long. Got too much freedom. Diane, I'm sorry, I opened my mouth. Yeah, but you know, you need some off days. So, um, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a bowl, Miss Diane. Okay. Okay. And so you center like everything else, and but all well, the opening has to be after it's faceted, and you do it from the inside, right? And it's harder to. Is it harder to do a cylinder or a base shape or not really? Not really because you can, so you can, you can, there's two ways typically that people will facet. Okay. 
you can keep it as a hollow, you know, as a solid form and then cut away mm -hmm. and then go in and open. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open a little mm -hmm. so I have the thickness to cut okay. away and then I'll go in and I will then push that out. Okay. Okay. Uh, but yes, you can, you can do it solid. And because Clay has a memory, I'm going to go ahead and give myself my bowl on the inside. Okay. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so you can see it's not taking up a lot of space. Now when you are, when you guys, so there's two different ways when we're getting off of the facet and just talking about the form, the bowl itself. When you're like this on the inside, you encourage the clay to go up. When you're like this on the inside, you encourage the clay to go up. Okay? So if you are like this on the inside, and you're trying to do a cylinder, and you like, this thing keep going out. It's because you're telling it to come out. out. You want to go straight up, it has to look like this on the inside. That encourages it to go up. Mm -hmm. So when you are doing a bowl, you can throw it like a cylinder, and then you'll go in, and when you get ready to shape it, you'll put that round tool in there, or use your fingers, and kick that out so uh -huh. you're on the curve. Yeah. If you, what I like to call throwing around a bowl, you already start with the bowl on the inside. Mm -hmm. So when you are compressing that bowl, it's not this. When a bowl is being compressed, it should never just be at the bottom. When you have a bowl on the inside, your compression starts here. And it goes along down the side. And then as you get near the arch, you press a little firmer <coughs> and then lighten up as you get near the center. That's a compression <laughs> on a bowl. So you're going the whole bowl. Absolutely. Not just the bottom. Yes. And I'm not pushing the shape out. I'm literally going down. <coughs> All the way to the side. And I pick up and I do it again. That's a compression on a bowl. When you are doing it like that, what you what you should not have is these bulged out by the side. Mm -hmm. Okay. You should still have the volcano. You should still have the volcano. You should still have the shape on the inside. Okay. So I've just got a little opening for my bowl. Well, that's okay. I could deal with the top because, you know, you could spot. But it's the pants always get me. Oh. It's a sawing motion. That gives you that different yes. mm -hmm. texture mm -hmm. that you could build up on. I'm going to turn it again until I get back. Turn it And fastening doesn't, um, you don't have to be perfect with fastening. Now, what can also work really well with this, Miss Diane, is if you have a um, wire tool that is curly. Okay. Because oh, yeah, yeah, bigger, yeah. bigger groups. Uh -huh. And so... I usually will take away just that little bit of excess. And the objective is not to touch the outside. Okay? So I'm not going here, and it's the hand that's doing everything. 
So you can't touch the outside. No, you can't touch the outside. Because you mess up the facet. Yes. Okay. And because I, I know I'm thick on the bottom, because I left it a little thick on purpose, because I want to be able to dig down in there and use the momentum of that pool to actually open the form with the fastening. Can you pull upwards? You can. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. with uh, from the inside with yes. just the one hand. Mm -hmm. So you're actually getting oh. under the clay and yes. pulling it up with the one hand and yes. using the two. Still using your middle finger only? Uh, I'm using all three. All three. I see I've got, got a myself. belly now. Oh, look at that. I'm going to go in again because I know I have enough clay that I can do so. It seems like your hand is bumping a little bit. Is that because it is. of the thin and thick spots? Excuse me. Yes. So now I'm going to take my this finger, just these riding, and I am pushing out <coughs> with the other hand that I just opened with, just to stabilize. So one hand, your finger is just riding. Just riding. Okay, and then the other was pushing out. Yes. It's just my fingertips on top. I want to soften that edge. And I'm going to go in. Because I want that, I need the smooth transition on the inside. So I use the softer rib. <coughs> smooth and then something like a metal rib I'll come behind so at this point no work gets done on the outside no once even if this was a closed form and she goes in and she takes away all she wants she literally is going in with her hand nice and slow to open the form mm -hmm. and then tilting her wrist to get it to open up mm -hmm. and come up. Mm -hmm. But it's never a case of you touching your outside. Mm -hmm. Now some people will do fasting and they'll work, they'll work wet, which means they will have um, either a cheese cutter that they're working with <coughs> or a curly, like to really, really get it textured on the outside. Mm -hmm. The curly wire. Mm -hmm. To really, really get that texture going. Um, and so then when they um, go in, they'll have like a, a chamois, mm -hmm. but it'll be soaking wet. And they will brace it on the outside as they open. Some people do that because they are, they want the texture and they want the fastening but they also want the height. And oftentimes, you know, somebody, you I never really see anybody, I mean, I've seen people do fastening on really tall pieces and they look right. okay, but the smaller ones are so much more dynamic because it's so compact. Mm -hmm. Everything that you've given it is in that smaller um, space. And you just know that that taller piece is going to have a certain amount of thickness to it. Do you ever change the wheel direction when you're working like that inside? I, I've started doing that and I, I feel I have more control inside if I change that wheel direction. No. Oh. I don't. Only because, so these wheels are for left hands and for right hands. And in the east, they throw... We throw counterclockwise. They throw clockwise. 
So we throw right hand, they throw left hand. And no one ever alterates, al mm -hmm. alternates between the two. Um, <clears throat> but I mean, if it's working for you, it's working for you, right? But then say you say to yourself, I want a will at home. Mm -hmm. That gotta have the that duality is gonna cost you about five hundred more dollars, right? Thanks for the warning. <laughs> it's gonna cost you about five hundred more dollars. So it's not something you should get used to. You need to figure out while you're throwing what is it about an ease of that. Mm -hmm. And if it it feels easier to you, then you need to try to throw left-handed. Mm -hmm. There are right-handed people who throw left-handed and see if that doesn't fix it for you. Um, but yeah, people will typically... You know what? I thought all wheels could go one way or the other. I thought you just no. flip a switch and it just goes no, the other baby, way. No, baby, that's an added. That's an oh. addition for it. Yeah, it's called a, it's just a dual wheel that means yeah. it can go left or right. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but like, uh, yeah, like if you were to get a Brent CXC, um, it's gonna it's it's going to come right handed. Right. That's just the given. Yeah. Unless you request it to be a left handed motion wheel, mm -hmm. or unless you request to have the duality. Mm -hmm. But in the east, theirs is just automatically left. Yeah. And so when you go there, it's it's you just have to learn how to do it with your left mm -hmm. hand. Mm -hmm. And think about it like before you had the motor and all of that, um, we would kick, right? Mm -hmm. And that's how I learned how to throw. I had to learn on a kick wheel. We didn't have that is hard. motorized wheels. Wow. And learn production on a kick wheel. Mm -hmm. So you were sitting there spinning, 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 and, and the sculpture teacher would come over and be like, oh, hey, you need to do 50 more in this amount of time. You're like, you are crazy. <laughs> and your whole body is wobbling. But in, in the East, they are oftentimes either sitting Indian style or on their knees, and they have a stick oh, okay. to spin their wheel, and they throw. Oh my goodness. Traditionally, mm -hmm. the, that's how that's it was done. Sure is. So now you got your facets. And I'm going to go in and cut away some of that bottom because I don't need all of it. And this is just one way. You have people who facet solid and then open up and throw. Mm. And do you have a, a chamois? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, perfect. And the chamois always comes in handle in, in, in clutch rather so that you can round that top. That's your fastened bowl. You already did. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so maybe if you're not ready to try it as a solid piece, you practice with opening just a little bit mm -hmm. and then going in and seeing how much you can pull out right. and then try a solid piece. So that's another thing is pulling what's pulling from the inside. 